Wiz Comics, February 1940, a Fawcett publication, Gangway for Captain Marvel. Extra Wiz Comics Extra introduces Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, Wiz Comics proudly presents the world's mightiest man, powerful champion of justice, relentless enemy of evil, Captain Marvel, Night in the City. Papers. Paper, sir? Why aren't you home in bed, son? I have no home, sir. I sleep in the subway station. It's warm there. Follow me. Where are we going? Wait and see. Suddenly, a strange subway car, with headlights gleaming like dragon's eyes, roars into the station and stops. No one is driving it. Have no fear. Everything has been arranged. The moment its passengers are seated, the car hurtles through the pitch black tunnel at tremendous speed. The car has stopped at the end of the line. The boy and his phantom companion step out onto a platform resembling the mouth of a weird subterranean cavern. Mustering his courage, the boy enters an ancient underground hall carved out of solid rock, grotesquely lighted by flaring torches. The seven deadly enemies of man, pride, envy, greed, hatred, selfishness, laziness, injustice. Welcome, Billy Batson, an old, old man, sitting on a marble throne at the far end of the cavern, speaks as they approach. How did you know my name? I know everything. I am a huge black cloud, a blinding lightning flash, a deafening peal of thunder. Form out of nowhere as the old man speaks his name. Shazam! Simultaneously, a curious inscription explaining Shazam's name appears magically on the wall. Solomon, Wisdom, Hercules, Strength, Atlas, Stamina, Zeus, Power, Achilles, Courage, Mercury, Speed. For 3,000 years I have used the Wisdom, Strength, Stamina, Power, Courage and Speed the gods have given me to battle the forces of evil which every day threaten to extinguish man from the face of the earth. Once again, Shazam speaks. Three thousand years? Yes, son, and during that time I have seen everything, known everything that happened throughout the world, from the highest to the lowest. The Historama. <laughs> Through this Historama, I have watched you from the moment you were born, Billy. On this screen, I saw your wicked uncle drive you from his house to make your own way in the world after your parents died, leaving you in his care. Miraculously, the Historama, a super television screen capable of depicting past, present, and future events, flashes scenes from Billy's life. I know that he got rid of you in order to get possession of the money and bonds your father willed to you. Directly above Shazam's head, a massive granite block, weighing tons, hangs from a slender, frayed thread. If the thread broke, the granite would crush the old man to powder. And the thread is almost worn through. All my life I have fought injustice and cruelty, but I am old now. My time is almost up. You shall be my successor. Merely by speaking my name, you can become the strongest and mightiest man in the world, Captain Marvel. Speak my name. Shazam! As Billy speaks the magic word, he becomes Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, I salute you. Henceforth, it shall be your sacred duty to defend the poor and helpless, right wrongs and crush evil everywhere. Yes, sire. To become Billy Batson again, also speak my name. 
and now I must go. Captain Marvel, speak my name. Shazam! Through the blinding flash of the lightning bolt, Captain Marvel sees the granite block falling on Shazam. A moment later, Billy finds himself standing at his old post. Shazam, Captain Marvel, and the weird underground cavern have vanished. Gee, it all seems like a dream. The next morning, sensational news almost makes Billy forget his night's adventure. Extra, extra, read all about it. Maniac scientist threatens U.S. radio system, demands $50 million, air officials alarmed. Give me a paper, kid. Want to read about the boss, eh? Shut up, you fool. Come on, let's get going. Billy overhears a strange conversation. I wonder what they meant. Gee, maybe the boss is the phantom scientist. I'd better follow them. Trailing the two men, Billy watches them enter the swanky Sky Tower apartments. Billy tries to follow them, but the doorman stops him. Go on, kid, beat it. You can't sell newspapers in here. But I... Unable to trail the strange men to their apartment, Billy calls on Sterling Morris, radio head, to tell him what he has discovered. I've got to see Mr. Morris. It's important. You can't see him. Get out or I'll throw you out. Before the receptionist can stop him, Billy runs into President Morris's office. Hey, hey, you stop! It's all right, Hammond. Let the boy stay. Well, son, what is it? I've got something to tell you about the phantom scientist, Mr. Morris. Excitedly, Billy tells Mr. Morris how he trailed the suspicious-looking strangers. And I followed them to the Sky Tower Apartments. I'll bet they were going to see the Phantom. The Sky Tower Apartments? Nonsense, boy. Why don't you tell me he lives at City Hall or in the Capitol at Washington? But the radio official ridicules his suspicions. This is a serious matter, boy. I'm in no mood for joking about it. You'd better go before I lose my temper. All right, I'll go, but if I find the Phantom's laboratory, will you give me a job as a radio announcer? A job? I'll give you anything you want if you find this madman, and now get out. I can't waste any more time listening to nonsense. That night. How am I going to get into the apartment house without being seen? Hmm, maybe if I go up into the tower of that office building over there. The office building elevator quickly takes Billy to the observation tower. This is a job for Captain Marvel. Shazam! He speaks the magic word. Miraculously, Billy has become Captain Marvel. With a mighty leap, Captain Marvel easily spans the yawning chasm between the buildings. What luck. This must be the Phantom's laboratory. Landing on the Sky Tower apartment roof, he peers through a penthouse window. As Captain Marvel watches, one of the men pulls a draw curtain, revealing a television screen. Master Stravana, are you there? The fools! They wouldn't pay what I demanded. At midnight, we will drive every radio station from the air forever. Suddenly on the television screen appears the face of Savannah, mad scientist who has threatened to destroy radio unless he has paid $50 million. In a few seconds, Savannah's fiendish radio silencer will drive every broadcasting station from the air lanes, unless Captain Marvel can stop him. Crashing through the window, Marvel races towards the diabolical machine. With not a second to spare, he smashes the radio silencer into smithereens. The other man races for the private elevator and slams the door behind him. Flexing his powerful muscles, Marvel pulls the door open, grips the elevator cable in steel-like hands, and hauls the car back to the penthouse. In a moment, both of Savannah's terrified assistants are securely bound with tubing ripped from the radio silencer. Who, who, who are you? I am Captain Marvel, gentlemen. Well, Savannah, that's the end of your radio silencer. But not the end of me. We will meet again, Captain Marvel. His work completed, Marvel confronts the scheming scientist who has watched everything through the television screen. Yes, Savannah, we will meet again. And when we do, you will be behind prison walls. 
or dead. Well, I guess that ought to hold our friend Savannah for a while. And now, Captain Marvel speaks the magic word. Shazam! Lightning splits the air. Resuming his normal shape, Billy telephones the radio company president. Mr. Morris, this is Billy Batson. Come right over to the Sky Tower apartment penthouse. I've got something to show you. A half hour later, Billy tells Mr. Morris everything except about Captain Marvel. And, and that's what's left of the radio silencer, sir. It doesn't seem possible that you did this all by yourself. But you've got to promise you won't tell anybody that I smashed the radio silencer. I've still got to capture Savannah, and it will be easier if nobody knows who I am. So now I'll get out of here, and you can call the police. Very well, son, I promise. By the way, Mr. Morris, how about that job you promised me? Do I get it? The job is yours. From now on, you're Billy Batson, radio reporter. Billy Batson, radio reporter. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Here's where we go to town. Me and... Who and you else, son? Er, nobody, sir. Just me and the microphone. That's all. Just me and Mike. Billy almost let the cat out of the bag that time. Don't fail to be on hand the next month when he and Captain Marvel go to town.